capacity, income capacity? Do they have the credit lines available? Do they have the, the financial resources to support this project? That is the type of analysis that should be done uh, by the Economic Development Department. And that's been, like Robert was saying, that's been the challenge with them because they don't have that, that skill set. They don't have that, that technical expertise in there. I'm glad that OMB is helping them now because they, they, they do have a lot more knowledge in that, in that world. So that will help them. I actually had recommended and talked to them. They you know, outsource or co-source with a local CPA firm to help them. You know, that they can do that analysis for them. Just like, you know, when you apply at the bank and then you that own your own business, you when you apply for a loan, you go through a credit review. They analyze all this analysis they do on your on your finances. And that's kind of the, the, the gap we've been seeing. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been going on for several years. And, they, and, and economic development will admit it. They'll admit it that they're struggling with that component of it. Because I know. <laughs> that's why we, that's why I haven't let go. That's why we've been going back, and that's why we had two projects going on at the same time because I haven't let go. That yes. Right. We'll do that in the next follow-up that we do that we have scheduled for this year. I'm sorry, sir. Some do. Some have. You will build a building or an expansion to your business by X date. Uh, it's handled during the negotiation part. You will hire X number of employees at X number of dollars by such and such date. So they're very defined. They're very strict guidelines and deadlines in there. And that's what we audit against. Did that happen? Okay, Mundo. What I what I what I think I think uh, Representative uh, Hernandez had hit it right on the head. This is an ongoing systemic problem that doesn't seem to have any any um, <laughs> end in sight unless unless we do we take some some action here. What I would like to see you bring back to us is a um, process for once we identify these types of issues. Give us your best recommendation on how we should go about resolving them. Okay, and then we can go ahead and finalize something from there. But do do the initial uh, uh, shell on that, so we can have a general idea of, from your 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 perspective as an auditor, what action should take pl transpire after we identify something as significant as this. Just stop issuing three eighty agreements. Yeah, boom, until boom, we boom, can get boom, it right. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, that I can. That, that might that, be that might be it. That falls under the scope of my responsibility. Okay, yes, can sir. you bring that back to us yes, next sure. cycle? All right, thank you. Okay, Mike. Okay. And following on that page number seven, the OMB uh, budget process audit, that's currently underway. Uh, the audit objectives are to determine if OMB has processes in place to ensure city, uh, city department budgets are planned, monitored, and controlled. That's still underway. Uh, next page, page number eight. Uh, we're doing an audit at the zoo department of the 2012 bond projects. Uh, the audit objectives are to determine if the zoo department has processes in place to ensure that, uh, that the 2012 bond projects are ad adequately uh, planned, monitored, and controlled. Uh, another uh, project that's underway is the, uh, we're doing a, a project of the, it's called the Workplace Investigation Review. Uh, the objectives of this project is to identify and evaluate the processes in place for grievances that are filed with the city manager, uh, city manager's department staff, with the city attorney's office, or the human resources department. Uh, another project we have uh, underway currently, uh, we have, we do this uh, once a year, the city council and city manager's uh, office P-card and travel project. Uh, the objectives of this review are to determine if the P-card program administrators uh, are properly reviewing and monitoring the P-card expenditures in addition to ascertain if proper purchasing and travel procedures have been followed and if P-card and travel expenditures are proper. Uh, the last one on that page, uh, we're currently working on the You Matter gift card reconciliation follow-up project. We worked on the project uh, last year. We, we issued the memo in February uh, 2018. Uh, the original review had one observation, so we're following up on that project. Um, page nine, uh, we're currently working on a Sun Metro overtime auto report follow-up. Uh, 
the original audit, uh, the original overtime audit report at Sun Metro was dated October 2, uh, 2017. The original uh, report contained two findings. So we're currently following up on that. And then the uh, pension payroll recalculation review project. Uh, the city of, of El Paso Retirement Trust uh, transitioned into a new payroll software system. Uh, the objectives of that review uh, were to verify employee retirement trust payments are ma made by, by CERT uh, using a new software. Uh, are they accurate? Uh, that ex we had actually an exit meeting this morning with the, uh, with the pension board. Uh, Mundo presented on that with them. And welcome to the November 15th, 2018 meeting of the City Planning Commission. My name is Chris Cummings, Chair of the Commission, and I call this meeting to order at 1.30 p.m. The City Planning Commission has sole and final approval authority over the subdivision maps. Although the Commission is the sole and final authority. Start again? Sure. <laughs> the City Planning Commission has sole and final approval authority over subdivision maps. Although the commission has sole and final authority with respect to subdivision approval, this authority is statutorily limited to a ministerial examination of the application's conformance to all applicable code provisions. The staff report for an agenda item may include conditions, exceptions, or modifications. If the commission does not wish to approve an exception or modification or require a condition, then the commissioner's motion will state which have not been approved. Otherwise, the staff will work with all modifications, exceptions, and conditions is approved and the applicant shall comply with all provisions of the staff report. All agenda items other than subdivision items will be conducted in the form of a public hearing. The chairperson of the commission may allocate and limit the time of person speaking before the commission. The normal process is as follows. First, the commission will hear a staff report followed by a statement from the applicant. The members of the public may speak followed by any final statement from the applicant. Finally, the matter will be closed to the discussion among the commission. The commission shall then make a recommendation that will be forwarded to city council. Call to the public, public comment. This time is reserved for members of the public who would like to address the city planning commission on any items that are not on the city planning commission agenda and that are within the jurisdiction of the city planning commission. No action shall be taken. A sign up is a, is a sign up form is available outside the city council chambers for those who wish to sign up on the day of the meeting. Requests to speak must be received by 1.30 p.m. on the date of the meeting. A total time of five minutes may be allowed to each speaker. The public comment portion shall not exceed 30 minutes unless otherwise approved by the City Plan Commission. Notice to the public. All matters listed under the consent agenda, including those, in the including those on the addition to the agenda, will be considered by City, Plan Plan excuse me, by City Plan Commission to be routine or have met all standards for development under state law. Platts only not requiring a public hearing and will be enacted by one motion unless separate discussion is requested by City Plan Commission or staff and the item is removed from the consent agenda. Members of the audience who wish to ask questions or speak regarding items on the consent agenda must sign up on the day of the meeting and such requests to speak must be received by 1.30 p.m. on the date of the meeting. When the vote has been taken, if any item has not been called out for separate discussion, the item has been approved. The City Plan Commission may, however, reconsider any item at any time during the meeting. Do we have any additions to the agenda? Yes, Chair Alex Huffman, for the record, we have two changes to the agenda, beginning with item number one to be postponed for three weeks. And the second change to the agenda is item number five to be postponed for 10 weeks. Okay, well, let's start with item number two. We need to get a motion to accept Oh, I'm sorry. Changes. Can I get a motion to accept the changes to the agenda? So moved. I second. Can I get a <laughs> vote? All in favor? All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 I forgot I was in charge for a second. <laughs> All right. I thought you were going to say amen. Beginning with item number two, SUSU180085. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the Commission. Brenda Cantu with Planning and Inspections. Item number two on the agenda is Amapola Estates, a major combination application. This development is located north of Red Road and west of Donovan. This slide shows the proposed subdivision superimposed on the, on the aerial map. 
The applicant proposes to subdivide 8.662 acres of land into five single family lots. Primary access to the subdivision is proposed through Clayton Road. The proposed subdivision is being reviewed under the current subdivision code. This is a preliminary plant and the final plant. And this slide shows the required and proposed cross sections for Clayton Road. The applicant has submitted a waiver request pursuant to section 1910.50 to waive 4.5 feet of the required 16 feet of pavement for Clayton Road. The proposed waiver does not satisfy the criteria under section 1910.50. However, the applicant is proposing to dedicate one, one foot of right of way to comply with the proportionate share and will also be installing the required five foot sidewalk. And this buffer shows, this uh, map shows the um, current conditions of the properties within a quarter mile of the proposed subdivision. The Development Coordinating Committee recommended approval with condition of Amapola Estates on a major combination basis, but denial of the waiver request to waive the improvements to Clayton Road. The condition requires that the applicant submit an application to the El Paso County Water Improvement District number one and receive approval from the district prior to the recording of the final plant. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for staff? No, can we hear from the applicant? Good afternoon, Adrian Ontiveros with CSA Design Group and we concur with staff comments. Okay. I actually do have one question. Um, it says that uh, in the recommendation that in order to, for the city to avoid responsibility of incurring costs to improve Clayton Road, so how would that be possible in the future? So the Development Coordinating Committee, um, when they reviewed it, they, um, so they recommended denial because the applicant is wanting to not improve their proportionate share of the pavement for Clayton Road. So all they're doing is installing a five foot sidewalk and dedicating one foot to their proportionate share. And then eventually when, you know, if they don't make the improvements or do the improvements right now, then later the city would incur the costs to, if Clayton never gets uh, improved. Okay. Is it likely to get improved in that area or no? I, I wouldn't know. I mean, it, right I mean, it's like rural, right? It is a rural road. Um, the likeliness, it, it really depends on how the area is developed in the future. But if uh, the city does see that uh, Clayton Road would need to be uh, widened, then it'll be the city to incur the cost, uh, typically through some sort of capital improvement project. Okay. Just curiosity. Thanks. Any questions for the applicant? No? Can I get a motion to approve or something? I have a question actually because here it said um, you, you all, um, the staff just wrote approval underneath but then it says with denial of waiver requests so is that, how should I um, word this motion then? I guess. So, so, oh. Okay. So there are, um, the City Plan Commission can go ahead and uh, approve the waiver or deny the waiver. Mm -hmm. That's up to you all. Um, it really, the motion could be approval of the uh, subdivision, but denial of the waiver, mm -hmm. or the option would be approval of the uh, subdivision and also approval of the waiver. Those are the two options. And the applicant is okay with? Can I make one comment? Sure. Um, well, the client, our owner, or the owner of the property understands that pedestrian walkability is a main concern in the area. So he has opted to go ahead, because the initial discussion was we weren't going to propose any improvements. We had initially asked for the waiver, but DCC had denied that. Um, so we went ahead and discussed it with the owner. He does understand the, the safety concerns with walkability in the area. So he has opted to, to install the five-foot sidewalk, installing the additional pavement for an area that probably takes up a third of Clayton Road, we believe is unnecessary at this time. Um, it's gonna be an issue for drivers. It could create confusion because it's a narrow road and then it's gonna widen all of a sudden and back to narrow. 
Uh, the sidewalk pretty much is going to have a dead end condition on both ends, which is another reason we were opting to not build the sidewalk. But again, uh, pedestrian uh, walkability was a concern with the owner, so we went ahead and uh, proposed to install the sidewalk. Um, so the only thing we're asking for a waiver is the actual pavement between the sidewalk and the existing paving. Uh, we just feel it's, it's, a, it's a safety concern from a drivability uh, perspective. It's a dead end road, right? Correct. And it dead ends before it gets to Montoya? Or no. the other direction? The other direction. Oh, to the river. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this, is, this used to be farmland, and then recently the new developments had started coming in. Um, the intent of this, again, is to prepare for land sale. Uh, what the use is going to be, it's probably just going to be single family on site ponding. Uh, the problem is he can't sell it with these huge lots, so he's trying to subdivide it to uh, make it more marketable. So I guess the question is whether to approve with or with or without denial. With yeah, with, with the denial intact or approve the subdivision and the condition. I mean, sorry, the well, the no. waiver or um, approve the subdivision and deny the waiver. Or, yeah. <laughs> well, he doesn't want the waiver anymore. Can you go so, uh, Nelson, Nelson Ortiz with yeah, Planning Inspection. So look at it this way. Would you all like to see the developer improve the 4.5 4 feet of additional roadway or not? Yeah. Maybe that's the discussion that should and be And maybe had. we should have a little discussion, discussion. That's about what that. That's I think I was getting at. Yeah. yeah. Um, if they're doing the sidewalk, <clears throat> I think that's, they've gone already above okay. and beyond. Agreed. Right. It makes no okay. sense to improve so, four and a half um, feet with asphalt. Yeah. Yeah. Zero sense. Uh, so I move to approve the application uh, and grant the waiver. All in favor? So you get a second. Though. I second that. Aye. Aye. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. Sorry. We'll get so smoother here. We I need problems. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Item number three, SUS U one eight zero 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 eight eight. Good afternoon, Chair Members of the Commission, Rocio Alvarado, Plan and Inspections. Item number three on the agenda is Petna States Unit seven, a major combination application. This is the subject property located north of Rojas and east of Peyton Drive. This is the preliminary plat. And this is the final plat. The applicant proposes to subdivide 71.60 acres of vacant land for 363 residential lots, one park, one commercial lot, and two drainage ponds within the city's ETJ. Main access to the subdivision is proposed from Rojas Drive and Peyton Drive. This development is vested and is being reviewed under the former subdivision code. The applicant is requesting the following modification requests in accordance with section 1904-170-83 to allow a 50-foot right away with 34 feet of pavement, a five-foot landscape parkway, and a five-foot sidewalk. This exceeds the minimum um, DSC standards. To allow a 76-foot right away with 44 feet of pavement, a 12 foot median, a five foot landscape parkway, and a five foot sidewalk. This also exceeds the minimum DSC standards. Staff recommends approval of Baden States Unit 7, subject to the following conditions. That prior to recording of this plat, the subdivision improvements for Baden States Unit 4, Unit 5, and Unit 6 be completed and installed to have adequate access. Staff recommends that the City Plan Commission require the applicant landscape the rear of all double frontage lots pursuant to Section 191680D of the former Subdivision Code. A guardrail and Type 3 dead end sign shall be provided by the subdivider pursuant to the Subdivision Improvement Design Standards of Stub Streets. And this concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for staff? No. Can we hear from the applicant? 
Good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners. Isaac Rodriguez with H2 Oterra, and we agree with all staff comments. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. With conditions. With conditions. With the conditions. Second. I, I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thanks. Okay, item number four, this is a public hearing. So we have no speakers today. Um, SUS C1800004. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the Commission. Karina Bresgala with Planning and Inspections. Item four on the agenda is Colfax MCA Edition Replat B, a resubdivision preliminary application. This development is located within the city of El Paso, south of Gateway East and west of Reynolds. Access to the proposed subdivision is from Euclid and Revere Streets via access easements. The property is currently vacant and the subject property is zoned smart code, so this subdivision is being reviewed under Title 21. Here's the proposed plot superimposed over the aerial photograph. The applicant is proposing to resubdivide 8.873 acres of land into two lots. One of the lots will have a temporary private pond, and then the other lot is going to be accommodating the new VA wellness clinic. Here is the preliminary plot. Um, so the areas in purple are those access easements, and then the one that's, a little, that's running through lot 1B is a pedestrian easement to serve that building. Um, and then with that, staff recommends approval of Colfax MCA edition replat B on a resubdivision preliminary basis. This concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. So what happens to that temporary ponding? Does it get dealt with? Right. I can let the applicant speak to it a little bit further, but I think the plan is temporary ponding during construction and then eventually to be a privately maintained park pond. Hmm. Any questions? Can we hear from the applicant? Good afternoon, Chair Commissioners. Connor Conde with Conde Incorporated. First, we do concur with all staff's comments. And then second, to assist, yes, we're currently working with EPW because we're. it's not just that pond. There is an existing Coors Channel that all this comes into. We're looking at helping them redesign that. And this pond will actually not just serve this area, but part of that cruise channel. Hmm. Hopefully that helps. Interesting. Any questions? I have a question. It's kind of aside, but do you know uh, when this project will begin? The VA? Mm -hmm. Like now. Okay. If they're in yeah. a rush. All right. That is Good. correct. That's an Thank interesting you. location. It doesn't have any much visibility, huh? Correct. But not at this point. Remember, this is a part of a bigger plan in terms of smart code design and its regulating plan. So, it, yeah, it's, it's like the MCA Bioscience Research. It's by itself, but as you can see, it's going to start filling in, thank you, Delord. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all. Item number six, again, this is a public hearing with no one signed up to speak. PZRZ18-00040. Good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners, Anne Gayate with Planning and Inspections. It's supposed to be hidden. All right. So item six on the agenda is, is uh, case PZRZ18-00040. This is a request to rezone the property located at the southeast corner of Boxwood and Wad Arc from R3 Residential to C1 Commercial to allow for a surface parking lot to serve the adjacent Del Sol Hospital. Mm -hmm. The property is roughly two acres in size and is currently vacant. In the staff report, there are uh, single family homes referenced. Those have been subsequently demolished. Mm -hmm. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning request with a condition that no access to the parking lot be provided from the parking lot to Bois de Arc. This is due to the presence of the adjacent single family homes remaining within the neighborhood. 
Here is the aerial map depicting the current conditions of the subject property and its surroundings. It should be noted this is a December of 2017 aerial, so the house is visible within the subject property are no longer present. And this is the applicant's general concept plan uh, showing how they propose to arrange the parking in their, uh, in their proposal. Hmm. So the concept plan shows a parking lot consisting of parking spaces and a ponding area. It should be noted that this concept plan demonstrates how the applicant's proposal could be accomplished on the subject property but is not binding. All applicable code requirements must be met at the time of development. And this illustrates the area from which we would recommend no access. Mm -hmm. Here's a view of the subject property as it exists today. And here's a closer view. You can see the existing conditions within it as they're obscured by the fence in the other photo. And this in the center is a subject property. And the photos surrounding it depict existing conditions to the north where there are single family homes, to the east across Sumac where development is primarily uh, medical and large office in nature, to the south where there is the existing Del Sol Hospital which would be served by the applicant's uh, proposed parking lot, and then to the west where there, there's a combination of uh, single family structures that are, that are rezoned C1 and used to serve the hospital and also uh, uh, parking to serve the hospital. And with that, the planning, or planning division has received no communication in support of or opposition to the rezoning request and we recommend approval of the rezoning request with one condition limiting access to the proposed parking lot to the adjacent streets that do not abut the single family homes. And this concludes my presentation. Any questions for staff? Um, yes, I do. Will there be, a, I guess, is there going to be a permanent barrier between whatever's left on the other side of the residential area and the parking lot? I'll defer to the applicant. Okay. Also, I'm confused because I thought you said that, excuse my French, the Bois de Arc, is that what it's called? I, I called? may have mangled that pronunciation. I, I was I, joking. I, <laughs> it's a terrible <laughs> joke. Um, I thought you said that there was no access from that street. To well, that's what we're proposing. Are you just limiting it? Right. We're, it's, um, so what we're saying is no driveways from the proposed parking lot to that street. The access, you know, for, for through traffic and to serve the existing homes would remain. So if you want to get into box, if you want to get into that parking lot, you come off a of boxwood. That's or, what we're recommending, yes. Okay. 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 Only for the hospital area. Thank you. Any Thank other you. questions? Can we hear from the applicant? The applicants. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm David Shimp. I'm the CEO at Del Sol Medical Center. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to uh, come and present this. Um, uh, so this, I've been at Del Sol now for just over two or uh, almost two years. And um, one of the first things that I was presented with in, in meeting with our city council representative, Henry Rivera, uh, was we need to be able to do something to address the parking concerns that we have of, uh, at Del Sol. Um, uh, currently, um, uh, over the past number of years before I got there, uh, Del Sol had been acquiring um, uh, these houses uh, for the purpose of being able to convert to, uh, convert to parking at some point. Um, uh, it is, uh, Currently, we don't have enough parking to be able to manage uh, all of the employees and everybody else that ends up being there, and so a lot of a lot of employees end up parking on the street. Um, so this has really been the purpose behind this is really to help uh, address the concerns within the neighborhood, um, and uh, and we've been able to secure the funding for uh, for the plan that has uh, that has originally been presented, not necessarily with the conditions that uh, that, that we've learned uh, have have ended up coming up, um, and so. Uh, part of the challenge with this, and to be able to uh, address the, the question that you had, um, uh, part of the challenge is that there is significant grade differences uh, mm -hmm. between uh, Bois de Arc on the, uh, on the north side and Boxwood. Um, it's about 10 feet of height difference. And so mm -hmm. to simply say that we would end up having access from, uh, from Boxwood up into, the rest, into that entire parking lot um, is, is really an un untenable thing at this point. Um, uh, we have intentionally wanted to be able to build individual parking lots in each of those former homes uh, as, as we've demolished them um, uh, to be, uh, build individual parking lots in those homes or where those home, home sites are because of the existing retaining walls and any sort of uh, erosion that could potentially end up happening from the uh, northeast corner of, the, of Bois d'Arc and Boxwood uh, down to where Boxwood and Sumac end up meeting. And so the, the value of having those retention walls uh, is, I think, important for, for potential erosion and otherwise. 
Um, right now, the, uh, the, the main issue with this is, is making sure that we um, are getting, from a safety perspective, is getting the, par getting the cars off of the street. Um, and, and so all of the, where the entrances into those individual parking lots essentially would end up being off of where the driveways were from those original houses into the, uh, into the individual parking lots. Um, I, at this point, I don't know the additional cost of, uh, of what, um, uh, what the city planners have, have evaluated for this. Um, I, don't, I have not secured any additional dollars for that, um, but, uh, but what we do have is, is a neighborhood that is um, excited about the opportunity to be able to alleviate some of the parking concerns and, and subsequent safety concerns that end up existing here. Um, and so we, the, the plan that we, we've presented without the conditions is, is one that we can be able to effectuate very quickly um, assuming we're able to transition from residential into, into commercial and be able to move forward with this uh, and, and be able to enhance, frankly, the, the safety of the streets there. I, I uh, don't know necessarily um, the impact uh, of, uh, of traffic. I can't imagine that the traffic is going to be any greater than what the tra traffic currently is. Um, but what this does is obviously make Boxwood or makes Bois de Arc that much safer of a street. Uh, any thoughts or comments? I'm sorry, and I'm sure it was mentioned. How many spots were we talking about? Um, Originally, it was 180. Yeah. About 180, and I think uh, in the current drawings, uh, I think you had like 165 That's or right. something like that. Okay. And for for visitors or for staff? This is just for staff. Okay. okay. We have a parking garage that we police separately uh, for our um, for visitors, patients, families. And would you assume that staff is coming and going at all hours of the day, all hours of the night? No, I mean, it's generally shift. Um, the, the majority of our uh, nursing staff especially ends up being a 7 a.m., 7 p.m. shift, uh, so a 12-hour shift, and then 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, we do have some uh, ancillary staff that end up being an off shift. Uh, they get off at around 3, um, kind of a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. type thing. Um, uh, so it's, it's not as if we're flooding a significant amount of traffic um, at your typical rush hour at, at around five or anything along those lines. Okay. Well, I mean, this is great you're doing this, and it's all the neighbors might, must be thrilled, and uh, thank you for helping uh, fix that problem. No, it's, it, it's our pleasure, and frankly, we see it as our responsibility to be able to help, help with this. And, so. and Ann, there was no pushback? No pushback at all from the neighbors? It's our impression through our communication with the city rep's office that the neighborhood is very much in favor of the development of this property as a parking lot in order to alleviate the parking concerns that currently exist. But as far as the condition, was there any talk yeah. of that? Um, just with the applicant and they're, uh, they're asking to have a motion without the condition that mm -hmm. staff's recommending. I guess yeah. my question also, I'm sorry, excuse me, what, on the condition, where did that arise from? Is that just something that part of for the code or is it that's part of our analysis okay. um, when we are reviewing cases uh, we consider the impact that they're likely to have on their surrounding properties and uh, we do make recommendations for things that aren't simply required by title 20 or the building code in certain instances where we feel that there is an adjacent sensitive land use that may be adversely affected um, unless that condition was placed upon the applicant upon the applicant's request and in this situation we did feel that it was necessary to protect the remaining single-family residential neighborhood from the impacts of uh, the cars accessing their street um, in order to uh, find parking and leave can we pull up the site plan and look at it also, also just to point out that the request is to rezone to commercial and so just think about Future long term use. Yeah. Uh, if the site were to be something other than a parking lot, we'd also want to be limiting access where they'd be directly fronting single-family residences. Mm -hmm. So that's another consideration. So where is the ingress and act, uh, egress? Sumac. To the street right now. Sumac and Boxwood, right? It's at the corner of... The, so the ingress and egress into the individual are essentially the driveways of the existing lot, uh, of the existing lot all the way around. Oh, each, okay. Each, each individual, I mean, we're essentially maintaining the integrity of the I home see. sites okay. to, to make sure that we're mm -hmm. not affecting any negative erosion. Mm -hmm. Cause if, if I may, this, cause this, this point up here uh, is significantly higher than this point down here. And so if, if we were to just kind of bulldoze it and convert it into a into just a single parking lot um, we would need to either significantly infill 
uh, or excavate, and, and that's a much larger issue at this point. Um, so recognizing that we would be potentially re uh, that we would be rezoning this, um, I can assure you that there are no no additional plans for any buildings or anything other than parking to be able to go in up here. Are there like six points of ingress in it? Twelve. Yeah, because there's there's twelve home lots, but the the space along uh, Boise Arc that, that we're talking about is this one, two, three, four, five. The others are all along Boxwood. The access to all the others end up being along Boxwood. It sure seems like this plan would not create a bottleneck. And if you had fewer points of access, you'd have a bottleneck and have employees trying to get out and lines and That's more stress. Okay. The bigger concern also is on Boyle Arc, there's a lot of traffic on both sides of the street. So the, the idea is really to decongest it because that's also what leads to a lot of traffic is that you got cars parked and then you've got the thoroughfare going through there. Now, there's a lot of thoroughfare, but if you just kind of like happen to be standing there, it almost seems like it's just a really busy street. And it's not. It's just the alleviating the traffic doing this condition. But we need to have access from Boyle Arc and from Boxfield just based on the site conditions because there is literally a head drop from the two corner yeah, lots in the summit. Uh, the, the, the top one in the corner and the top one on the bottom the corner, it's a roughly not type of difference. So there's a difference in, in uh, elevation on the lots. That's yes. what makes it more difficult. Before we had a parking problem, now we get a solution. It might not be the best, but it is a solution. So, And it, the recommendation for planning was is it based on a, like a traffic study or impact study or anything like that or just sort of a perception? This recommendation does come from planning. Uh, we, we are the source of it. They did have a traffic impact analysis uh, approved and uh, um, this wasn't one of the recommendations within it, but it is felt necessary because what was evaluated within the traffic impact analysis was this as a proposed parking lot. Now, however, once it becomes a C zone or C1 zoned lot, it can be used for anything which is within the C1 district. Now, there are now this parking lot with you know 10 or 12 cars entering and exiting from each of the I guess it's 11 driveways because the stormwater pond probably doesn't have one um, is probably not going to have a tremendously negative impact. But looking to the future. Uh, once this lot has been uh, combined and uh, and if the hospital ever needs to expand its uh, facilities and develop this into a building with a different parking configuration or if it's ever sold in the future to uh, to another developer who wishes to use it for anything which is permitted in the C1 district it's very easy to imagine scenarios in which you would not want to have the driveways for that use abu directly abutting the existing single fo family homes that remain on Wad Arc. Is there and a more specific C classification that could limit it? C1 is uh, uh, one of the lower classifications. The problem with dipping too much lower is that we very quickly run into situations where a surface parking lot wouldn't be permitted as a, as, as a use by right. My only concern really would be that you know there's eight homes or so that at least in my past experience in my past life will be affected adversely value wise I mean being directly across the street from a, a visible parking lot where the ingress and egress is there but if there was no the sign was directly across them and where are they if they're yeah. seeming to be more supportive of the project and didn't individually reach out none of them then to me at this point, I mean, to get the cars off the street, I think it probably yeah. makes sense. I, I can tell you, I've attended a number of Representative Rivera's, um, uh, I've, I've attended a number of Representative Rivera's um, uh, town hall meetings, um, I think four or five at this point, uh, where as the neighborhood's primary concern is getting the cars off, uh, getting the cars off the street. And, and that's what we're here to, to be able right. to accomplish. It's unfortunate because that's a very vocal cohort of people that they wouldn't come and support this at at CDP, CBC, I mean, that would be helpful, you know. It's accomplishing what they wanted to so show some support from the, the Neighborhood Association would have been good, but I know you can't control that. So anyway, any other questions? Are we ready to make a motion? If anyone has any other questions? Um, or? Sam and Juan, do you think it would have a serious impact on the home values? I think serious, this way? I think serious is probably overestimating, but 
do you want to buy a house directly across the street from an ingress or egress of a large parking lot, or would you rather it be a rock wall that blocks off that? Well, the other option would be having cars all in front of your house, right. which would be worse. It's just like living right. in Kern. So, right. Oh. Right. No, but I mean, I, I don't know that there's necessarily a reasonable alternative to the solution. And at the end of the day, I mean, safety is key, and anyone who's driven down a street residential street like this where there's cars sometimes parking on both sides that that gets pretty dangerous so um and again i mean it's not like this is happening without public notice mm -hmm. so, what would be the height of the wall that would um be across the street from the residents at this point there isn't a wall um, at, at this point again it's just it, it's maintaining the uh the driveways as, as a part of the lot um, I have not gotten funding for that. I don't know if I would be able to get funding for that, to be completely honest. I think the issue probably wouldn't be the wall. The issue would be whether you're infilling or you're excavating. And just based on that one picture, whether it's 8 or 10 feet in elevation change, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a lot. At that point, I'm not sure that the, you know, the, the, the cost of doing that would outweigh the benefit of doing the parking lot. You know. Because honestly, at that point, then we might not have i might not be able to get the funds to have a solution and what i'm trying to do is be a good neighbor i mean is there any way like on as you're looking at it at like lot 12 that's the lower end no sir no? um what's what's listed is lot one is actually the lowest end mm. uh, lot there's not as much uh um, grade difference um between i guess lot uh lot seven and lot 12. i don't know if you have the yeah. data from um so so there's not as much grade difference between the west side of, of of this block and the east side of this block the the greater grade difference ends it's up being from, from north to, back, to south yeah. okay so there's not really an option to try and find a happy medium as far as something along that back that back facing the single family residences right not not at this point no sir Any other questions? So I guess the motion before you is to pass with the condition or without the condition? Right. Well, and I'd like to make a motion to approve and uh, uh, with, uh, without the condition. You get a second? I second yeah. that motion. And you're saying without the condition? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, again, in public hearing, no one has signed up for this item. PZDS18-00041. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Andrew Salome, the Planning and Inspections. Next on the agenda is a detailed site plan application for property located at 3490 Joe Battle. The property is 0 0.75 acres in size. It is uh, currently sound C4 and is vacant. A restaurant is a permitted use in the C4 zone district. The detailed site plan is a requirement of a condition that was imposed on the subject property by ordinance number 15023 dated January the 29th of 2002. It does require submittal of a detailed site plan to be reviewed and approved by City Planning Commission. The development uh, site plan does propose a 2000 586 square foot building to allow for a restaurant. This development also requires a minimum of 18 parking spaces and they are proposing uh, to have 26 parking spaces along with three bicycle spaces. Development also does comply with uh, Title 18 landscape ordinance. Access to subject property is proposed off of Joe Battle. This is the elevation. The site plan imposed on the aerial. This is the subject property and a view of the surrounding areas to the subject property. 
Planning Division did not receive any adverse comments from any of the reviewing departments. And Planning does recommend approval of the detailed site plan request as it meets the requirements of Section 20.04150, which is a detailed site development plan. That concludes my presentation. Any questions for staff? None. Can we hear from the applicant? Good afternoon, sir. The project is ready to go. With all approved, we are willing to conform to any other conditions that they may, they may be. It's ready, ready to go uh, pad. Great. You agree with all staff comments? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Will you state your name for the record, please? My last name is Siddiqui. Okay. First name is Shaheen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I get a motion? Move to approve. Second. second. I'm sorry. No, Can ahead. I get a second? <laughs> go second. Ahead. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Okay, other business. Um, discussion and action on City Plan Commission minutes for November 1st, 2018, which you've all read in detail. I actually have a couple of corrections that I'd like to suggest on the minutes. Okay. If, except I, well, let me see if I can get a moment. Can you all bring up the minutes or not? If not, I can. No? We don't, we don't have. Okay. Well, in the section, I'm sorry, I'm looking on my phone. Okay. Item eight. Oh no, that's it's the section of the regarding the Fresno property where we had the uh, input from the community and um, on the bulleted I bulleted items where it said following people from the public spoke. Uh, Sylvia Carrion is with Mission Valley uh, Civic Association, not Neighborhood Association. Okay, so do and I? Go I'm ahead. not done. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Marcella Carrillo, she's that that uh, reference would also be Mission Valley Civic Association. And the last one, if I can get my phone to cooperate here. Um, the next bullet after Marcella is uh, Fabiola Campos Lopez, and her first name is spelled with a B, as, a bo as in boy and not a V. And she represents the El Paso Neighborhood Coalition. And I know that because I was on that coalition, so. And she's the Mission Valley Area Representative. And I know that because she took my place. So, All right. Just saying. So those are the corrections I'd like to propose. Thank you for your attention to detail. And I will not joke about reading the minutes again. <laughs> My husband doesn't feel that way, but that's another issue. <laughs> okay, so those corrections are noted. Do I need to take any other action on that? Um, okay, and number nine, uh, planning report. Upcoming presentations on updated land use assumptions and capital improvements plan as required by chapter 395 of the Texas Local Government Code prior to the reevaluation of the existing impact fee structure for water and wastewater services. So good afternoon, Kimberly Forsyth for planning and inspections. This is just to let the commission know that coming up in the next month, more or less, you'll be seeing presentations um, from the planning staff and El Paso water staff and these will be related to impact fees, which, as you know, are assessed by the city for water and wastewater services. Impact fees um, generally are assessed for large projects, projects that cover multiple developments. As you know, being on the commission, each development is responsible for their infrastructure. But sometimes you have tank sites or treatment centers or, or larger facilities that actually are covering multiple neighborhoods or an entire region. And so that's what the impact fee is for. It is um, assessed at the time of plotting and then it's actually paid as the building permits are, are charged. 
and the city council back in 2009 adopted an impact fee statute, so they're in effect. And the statute also requires that every five years, the staff conduct a study to determine whether the impact fees that are being assessed are adequate to cover the cost of the infrastructure or if they need to be adjusted either upward or downward. So the presentations from the planning staff look at development going out five years, 10 years into the future, what we anticipate the development will be, and then El Paso Water will present a capital improvement draft showing what infrastructure will be necessary to serve those developments. And I just wanted to make you aware because this is not something that comes up often. Every five years we're required to do an update and the, the City Plan Commission will make a recommendation after the presentation which will be forwarded to City Council which is the final authority on the impact fees. What, a recommendation to approve it or alter it? Or? So there will be um, a couple of things. There will be the land use assumptions map which planning will present our forecasted growth over the next 10 years. There will be the capital improvements plan which El Paso Water will present showing what they think is going to be necessary and then if El Paso Water recommends any adjustments to the impact fees. Okay. Thank you, Kimberly. And this will also be open to the public so there may be members of the public who want to speak on this issue as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, can I get a motion to... Can we just have one more? Oh, minute? I'm sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> can, can last, last, so uh, this will be right. the last time. This is only my, only my second, second chairing. No, I'm sorry. So, nice. uh -huh. so now will be the time to ask him all the questions that you want because uh, we just want to recognize Kim because today is her last day with the city. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So she's going to really? be retiring. And Whoa. so we just want to take a moment to thank her for her service. And um, um, yeah. so we'd like to present her with this award. Wow. And actually, that's the final sign off yes. for now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You deserve it. Yes, wow. Kim. Well, well. Well. Staff, you want to say any word of encouragement as she rides out to sunset? <laughs> <laughs> so um, last January, I passed 25 years with the city. I'm coming up on my 26th year. It's been a really great experience. Planning is the best department to work in. I've worked in four departments, and I learned something in each of those departments. And I... Um, I really appreciate having the opportunity to work with boards and commissions. I think you all contribute so much to the city and you give of your time and you give of your intelligence and your observations. And I just want you to know how important you are to the city and that I enjoy having worked with the boards and commissions for these many years. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. You've been a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so yeah. much. Foresight out. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Picture. Commissioners, can we, um, bef you, you may want to close your meeting and then we can take pictures. Oh, yeah. Well, I just have to say, I've, I used to work at the city of El Paso and I knew Kimberly back then and you've been the backbone of planning and, and other departments as well. And I don't know who Who's going to fill that role? Everyone here, you're great, but she's been uh, rock, she's not, a that, rock solid. That is not going to be filled by anybody. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think it's going to be a real she's loss for the city. She's a rock star on our own, so I don't yes. think anybody would come close to that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But, but I do have to say, we have some really talented staff, and you see them every meeting. They make presentations. They're very professional, and so I think the department will be in good hands. Mm. Agreed. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Third. Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>
And that doesn't make any sense to me. I, I really do want to know how this process works. If we're here for the safety of the city uh, and, 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 and fire department is called out, I mean, the, some of these some of these bills are pretty significant. They're not they're not cheap, guys. So right now, everyone in this room, if you you you're in an accident out there and an ambulance is called to the scene, you can expect to get a you know two to three hundred five hundred dollar bill in the mail. And that's why I asked you to look into this and what the process is and how that works. Because what I'm thinking is happening is everyone on the scene is getting getting hit with the same bill. Okay, in the in the legal world, they would call that double billing, right? You can't double bill a client, right? <laughs> okay, you either work in the hours or you're not. But you know, one ambulance shows up, but everyone involved gets the same bill. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So we actually looked at this a few years back, and what happens if an ambulance, the red ambulances, the fire department ambulances, if they respond, and they treat you on site, but no transport, just treat you, give you a Band-Aid, give you a sling, whatever, it's $350. If they put you in the ambulance and transport you to the hospital, it's $550. That's the last time we looked. I don't know if that's increased. We're going to have to study the Schedule C. Yeah, so that's what happens. And if you ever see it, you know, the dynamics of a traffic accident, you know, maybe Representative Rivera can attest to this, Everybody's running around doing their job, and then there's one fireman with a clipboard trying to get your insurance information. And he's there, where's your insurance? Who do you have your car insurance? And he's trying to get it from you before they can bill you. And it's kind of dynamic, but that's the business world. That's the business we're in. So we'll look at that, the billing, and see how we're doing, how, they, how our collections are doing. It's been a while since we looked at it. The last time we looked at it, that's when this other stuff started bubbling to the top. So we'll see how they're getting billed. So, okay, well that concludes what I have there. Well, the rest is the recurring and the admin. There's one thing I wanted to let the committee know. This is what we scheduled. I told, I said earlier, we're still getting requests for audits to be done. And there's three that didn't quite make it, didn't make the final cut. And two of them were, rep, were recommended by members of this committee. One was Representative Rivera, you asked for a review of the equipment condition and purchase at the fire and the police department try to get it in but i ran out of hours if time allows i'll try to squeeze it in the other one we had was the maintenance of our park system on how we're doing the scheduling of the maintenance and you know inspections and conditions and, and how that done it didn't quite make it i still have it on the list it's like on the separate list off the booklet but i still have it if time allows me we'll do it and just this week, uh, this week, last week, I met with the city manager and, and Robert Cortinas, and I had another request. So now we have a request that they want us to start looking at the franchise fees from the utility companies. So I'm looking at starting that process where we can start. I know everybody's smiling. Yeah, I'm going to be, they're going to turn off my lights. It's going to happen. Uh, you know, but uh, we'll start looking at audit. I'm, I'm actually, I did some research yesterday. I'm trying to find, we'll put an RFQ, just like we, oh, like we did with the ambulance building. It was on an RFQ. We put it out for bid. But we'll put it out for, for requests for uh, qualifications from these national firms to do it. Because I don't have the expertise on staff to do franchise fees audit. I'll have to train up the staff to do it. Uh, but there are outfits out there that can do it. There's some national firms. I've been finding some on the, just on an internet search, I've been finding some. I actually found a law firm that does it, which is that's weird. But it, they, whatever niche they can find. So we'll look at finding a firm to do uh, franchise fees. Yes, ma'am. Um, I notice you have here for Sun Metro. And um, one of the things I've been thinking about, I, I went back to review all the CRMA. Um, since I know you love the streetcar and um, the regional. Oh, God. <laughs> um, and I've noticed that there's a ton of deliverables that CRMMA was supposed to provide to the city, and it, the entire system is owned by them. So there's got to be a transfer done, and there's got to yes. be a reconciliation done with those two agreements. Mm -hmm. And the city has to have the entire ownership of the streetcar. In addition to that, um, the streetcar has a ton of operations that are regulated by TxDOT, by the state, um, and operations. And so that that operation operations manual 
was just recently accepted. So as we think about the launch of the streetcar and, and for the next uh, four quarters, I think it probably would be prudent to go and look to see if we are operating in compliance and if it, the entire system is in our ownership and that, and those agreements are closed off. Good suggestion. I'll find and, so I don't know if that could be in tandem with Submetro and if there's extra hours or, well, um, it, it does, it does seem a little expensive. We could replace one with the other, but the problem, the question I have right now, are we ready to audit the streetcar project? Has the transfer gone over clean or is still, I don't know, is there still any pending? Oh, well, I know item? it's not because we don't have all the streetcars yet. So the streetcars, yeah, so they have to be like blessed, right? And then, and then CRMA has to say, yes, we accept it. And then the transfers over to the city. Yeah. So until we have all of them operating, it's not, we're, it hasn't closed out yet. Yeah. I, I, I would suggest let's keep our eyes on it. And once that transfer occurs, then it will be ripe for audit that we can make sure we did get all our deliverables. It wouldn't be a good idea to go in and audit why the deliverables were still pending because we would say, hey, you haven't delivered that. The response is, well, we're getting to it. We'll get it to you by the end of the quarter. So you would be like fruitless. So I think the best strategy would be to wait until the transfer does take place and then they're ready. But we'll keep our eye on that for you. I'll, I'll keep in touch with you on that one. I think that'd be an outstanding one. I would love to do that one, especially after the nightmare I had with the cyber attack. You can't believe my sleepless nights during that time frame of my life. But that, that concludes it. So I have those three that pending, now fourth, with the streetcar. So I'll, I'll keep the committee posted on how we're doing on the audit plan like we do every quarter. And we'll see if we can factor those in and squeeze them in as we go and uh, just try to make it work. We, you know, we got nine people on staff. We, you know, we do a lot with nine. Because I know when I review the other cities, they have a lot more... Audits, auditors that we do, and they don't even come close to doing what we do. You know, we do a lot. We average over 30 audits or projects a year, which is a phenomenal amount. And you'll see, that, trust me, next year when we do the, the review and you see those other three other city auditors, ask them. I, I, I challenge you to ask them. They'll tell you they do a lot. Because we always get that comment. So, Edmundo, really quick, just a little bit of housekeeping before we move on to the next item. I noticed that it's posted as a discussion and action. Oh, yes, we have to approve it. Um, and the same for item number four. And as the FOX duties for as a committee is, if you all are in agreement, then it will be recommended as you know to City Council for approval, both the audit plan and the, the charter. charter. Do we need a mo do we need a motion to accept the 2018-2019 uh, audit plan? I, I move um, to accept it with the Correct. efforts to include those four pending items. I agree. <laughs> All in favor? Yes. All opposed? All right. Okay, we also need the charter approved. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Carries. All right. Okay. I'm going to that. The last thing we have is just the surveys. We've passed those out. As you can see, the, there's a direct correlation on the survey results to the results of the audit. It's been doing this a long time. You get a good audit, you get a good survey. Sometimes you get a medium audit, you get medium results. Sometimes you get a bad audit, so we get a bad survey. So it goes hand in hand. It's just like the officer, like a police officer, doesn't get a good report from the citizen when he's getting arrested for, you know, a, a warrant, you know, in the middle of a party, you know, doesn't happen. So we can, well, but we'll continue to survey because I want the committee to know the, the efforts done by the staff. And I, I, I monitor it and I talk to the department heads when I do see a sour survey. So with that, that complete, that concludes our update for this quarter. I want to thank you guys so much for getting this done because this was kind of like holding us. It's like I told you, we did the first quarter done and we hadn't even had it approved, but I had to keep the staff working. Gotcha. But we did. So thank you so much. No, no, we just want to thank you for your, your, your diligence and your professionalism. It's been a, it's been a privilege to work with you over the last year. Fun. Uh, you guys have us in here. There's three of us that are brand new. And I can honestly tell you, being in this place is like, like drinking from a fire hydrant. 
Uh, it's overwhelming at times, but you you know your professionalism and your your stick to itness makes it makes it just so much easier for us to you know make this transition into this community. Uh, and I want to thank you for that. And You're welcome. This, this committee, is, I, I've already said this over and over, this is the most powerful committee in our government. You know, a lot, a lot of people don't realize that, but this is, of all our committees we have, you know, right below the city council, in my humble opinion, this is the most powerful and, and most important committee we have in our government. It's only because we have Representative Hernandez on our team. Yeah. It's 25%, uh, <laughs> 75%, but you're, you're all, you all contribute, and you, when you give me feedback, you don't understand how much it helps me. It, it, it keeps me on target, keep, and the staff to hear it, so when they're out there representing it, we, we, we talk the line. You guys keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great work for the community. It's not going unnoticed, but this place moves faster than okay. the speed of light, uh, but uh, keep it up. With Thank that being sir. said, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Yes. Against? So moved. Meetings. Thank you, everybody.